iOS 17.1 is officially available. You can go ahead and download it now, um, but it's actually a pretty big update. And so we're gonna go over all of the major new changes that you can expect to see in iOS 17.1. So one of the bigger useful changes, in my opinion, is the ability to use cellular data while um, airdropping something. So usually it, if you don't have Wi-Fi and you get out of range, well, then that airdrop's going to stop. But what you can do is actually head into settings here and under general and then airdrop, you have use cellular data. So you'll continue to send and receive content when Wi-Fi is not available during airdrop. And I have here a uh, phone using just iOS 17, not 17.1. And so under airdrop, you'll see that that's actually not there. So that's pretty useful. I highly suggest turning it on if you have unlimited data, because if for some reason you're sending something to a friend and maybe you happen to walk away or they walk away, um, you can start sending this via cellular data, assuming that they also have this turned on by the way, and they're running 17.1. Apple Music actually got a ton of new changes and some quality of life features that a lot of people have wanted. Uh, I don't use Apple Music. I think I've documented that pretty well, but I do have uh, a subscription for it for some reason. Uh, so you can see all of the new features here. Uh, when you actually open it up for the first time, you'll see that uh, these are the ones that we're gonna highlight. So the first thing is instead of loving a song, you can now favorite a song and it actually has functionality behind it instead of just being something that you do, you, you have some abilities uh, with that. So let's go ahead ahead and show you that if you were to favorite a song, what actually happens to it. So if you head into any album here, and let's just say I wanted to favorite a song, I can long press on it and hit the favorite icon. While you're playing a song, you can also favorite the song right there. Um, you can see here, you get a nice little animation. Uh, and of course you can do it from your always on display or the lock screen. It's there in the bottom left corner. So the functionality behind favorites though is actually pretty cool here. And it's a lot like Spotify, which is what I use. Uh, you can go ahead and go into your songs or your albums. And if you go up here in the top uh, right corner, which is also new, you now have a filter icon and you can filter by favorited or all songs. And then you can sort those by artist recently added or title. So if I go here, uh, I have two songs that are favorited. And again, you can go into albums and you can filter by favorited. So I have one album favorited here. And just for a frame of reference here, if you were to look at a phone that hasn't been updated to 17.1, you, you don't see that filter icon, it's just the sort icon, which if you were to tap on it, you can just sort by title, recently added and artist. Another new feature in Apple Music is when you add a song to a playlist, it kind of behaves a little differently. There, um, I just don't use this often, but you will see like recent playlists at the top. Uh, right now it's kind of categorized by all playlists, but you can see here uh, the new playlist uh, icon has kind of shrunken down a little bit um, and it's not under all playlists anymore. Uh, the cancel button's been moved to the left instead of the right. Um, and then when you go ahead and add a song, so I'm adding the same song that's already in a playlist, it actually tells you right here, usually it'll give you like a pop-up saying you're about to add it to the playlist um, and it's already in there. But here, before you even do that, you can see that it's already been added. And so that's a nice little touch here. What happens here, as you can see, one of these songs is already in your playlist. So we just don't even have to get to that point. You can see here on 17.1 that it shows that it's already added. And speaking of playlists, if you have a custom playlist that you made yourself, you can go into edit and actually change the artwork. And so what's cool about that is uh, there's some here that are already like kind of made for you that go in the design and the aesthetic of what Apple does with its playlist covers. Also in playlists, if you go down and scroll to the bottom here, you'll see song suggestions. So it'll give you uh, suggestions on songs that are very related to what you have already in that playlist, which is something I really enjoy in Spotify. Uh, so that's obviously now on Apple Music in 17.1. And if you look at 17 here, it's not at the bottom of that playlist. So another good quality of life feature, which a lot of people like. And also if you're playing songs, uh, just kind of like randomly shuffled and you're getting a lot of songs by the same artist, and maybe you just don't like that artist anymore, uh, you can actually go into uh, the artist section here, click on your artist and have suggest less. And so it'll be suggested less when shuffling all of your songs. This next feature is for those of you who have an iPhone 14 Pro or Pro Max, and I guess 15 Pro and Pro Max, but this was already on there out of the box. Uh, but in 17.1, this brings it over to the 14 Pro and Pro Max, and that's if you have the flashlight on, there's a little icon here in Dynamic Island. So we've had this on the 15 Pro and Pro Max, kind of letting you know that, hey, you have your flashlight on, um, but if you had a 14 Pro and Pro Max, that just didn't exist in the Dynamic Island, but now it does.
There's also some changes to standby in settings. So if we go into settings and under standby here, you have a new display section. Um, and the new feature here is that you can turn the display off uh, or you can change when the display turns off. So right now it's set to automatically. I think that's by default. Then you have after 20 seconds or never. Um, and so basically if you were to put your phone on your charger uh, and activate standby mode, um, it'll automatically turn off after it notices whether your, your phone is in use um, or if the room is dark. And you can go ahead and change that to after 20 seconds or again, have it on never. So you can just kind of constantly have standby at all times. And if you go over to a phone before the update, you'll see that night mode gets moved into that section and that obviously Obviously, that section doesn't exist. Something that gets brought back in 17.1 is custom ringtones. And this is something I had no idea uh, was removed. I guess it got removed somewhere along the way uh, and now it's brought back. But if you purchase custom ringtones, they should appear. Um, I don't know that I even have custom ringtones. So if I go here, ringtone, scroll all the way down. Yeah, I don't even have custom ringtones. Um, well, let's see the tone stores there. Download all purchased tone. I, I highly doubt I have custom ringtones, but if you do, they should be back down here at the bottom, which I guess it was removed, uh, but now it's back. So rejoice if you're a custom ringtone user. Another feature that I think a lot of people really wanted that Apple just added in 17.1 is the uh, photo shuffle change here. Um, you can actually photo shuffle by specific pictures, so or actually by a specific album, uh, you can choose that album and it'll automatically shuffle the photo based off of your frequency. So you have hourly, uh, on tap, on lock, or daily. Um, and so yeah, basically before it was set to people, pets, nature, and cities, and now you can go ahead and create a custom album on your own and go ahead and choose that album if you'd like to. This next feature are for those who have a 15 Pro and Pro Max because it's tied to the action button. And um, I have not had any accidental touches of the action button where my camera's gone off because that's what I have it set to right now um, when, it, when it's been in my pocket. But uh, for those who have, this is going to fix that. Basically, uh, the proximity sensor is now going to detect when your phone is in your pocket. So it's dark or covered up and the action button will not work. So you know what? Let's test and see if that works right now. I'm going to press and hold the button. So here it turns on the camera. All right, camera's off. Off, putting it in my pocket I'm gonna press and hold okay well that didn't work uh, let's try one more time put it in my pocket we'll give it a second here I'm gonna locate the button press and hold and I didn't feel anything, so I think you need to give it a second. I kind of just did it right away. Uh, but yeah, so that's cool. That should help cut down uh, accidental discharges of your action button uh, pretty substantially. So a nice quality of life feature for those who, people who have been experiencing that. This last little change isn't new at all. Like the core feature isn't new at all, uh, but it's new to me and I had no idea you could do this. So I wanted to share that if you were to go into messages here, and um, if you wanted to send a photo, I usually just tap on the plus icon and hit photos, right? I thought that's how everyone did it, but you can actually just long press and it brings up your photos. And that's not new. The, the new part about this is when you do that, you get haptic feedback. You don't get that before. Had no idea that was a thing. So would love to hear from you if you actually knew that. And I'd also love to hear from you what your favorite iOS 17.1 feature is or just 17 feature in general. Let me know down in those comments. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you around in the next video.